Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all of you. Well, when Sam Shekhar told me that, uh, you know, uh, I was seriously making the presentation. So I got a call from him and he said, look, uh, you have to make the presentation. I said, what's the duration? He said, it's about maximum 20 minutes and it's before lunch. So I said, wow, this is a great opportunity for me to, you know, uh, see that I finish fast. And hopefully the stomach call should be, you know, more than the call in the head. So I said, let me see as far as I can finish as quick as possible. Anyway, well, uh, let me start off with an incident when I was working with the Berlas. Uh, where one of the consultants in Bombay uh, called me up and said, uh, you're the head of uh, HR. I said, yes. He said, why didn't you, I was actually planning to start my own business. And uh, he said, look, uh, why don't you come and meet me? There's an opportunity for you to do business. I said, okay. So he's a, quite a senior man in the construction industry. Uh, he has also started something on his own and done, done big. In fact, he has grown big. So I met him. He said, hi, wonderful. Well, uh, you are a broker. I said, what? I'm not a broker. He said, you are in HR. How's rent? You, in fact, are able to, you know, put people into houses and charge for house rent. So you'll be able to tell me what's the value of rental in different parts of the city. Well, I was kind of, you know, shocked for the time, for that time. And I said, look, probably I need to tell him what HR is all about. So that's the, that's the amount of awareness which HR had actually done to him or brought into him. Anyway, so uh, thanks, Charles and uh, Sudhakaran. Uh, while you were making the presentation, a few key points that I thought, uh, it sounded like, you know, a lot of HR uh, initiatives being driven by both of you in various companies. Uh, you talked about KPIs, KRAs, and one of the things you said is, well, in order to be a world-class manufacturing company, it's not only important to look at operations, look at the structure, but it's important to change the mindset of people which is the most important thing. So that's where the HR comes in. And there's a new uh, uh, coining which I have done, I call it as KIC. Charles, I call it as KIC, C-I-C. It's not K-I-C-K. -K. It's continuous improvement culture. This is what HR is all about. And like Sudhakaran said, to be a world-class manufacturing company or to to be successful, it's important to uh, the speed and response to the to the market needs or the competitors' needs are very very critical. That's why you're able to overcome the competition. And he talked about KPIs, employee satisfaction survey, and I was quite delighted to be uh, you know sitting there and listening and saying that look, this looks all a part of HR itself, right? Okay. Uh, let me tell you uh, a bit about the organization. What we do is just really one slide. Now, while making the slides, I said, what is it that I need to actually present? Uh, well, I have made it absolutely simple. There are not too many slides. There are not too many numbers. It's simple. It talks about how things need to be done during different situations. Okay. Uh, what we do in infinite possibilities. The word infinite possibilities came in, we believe that once you think out of the box, the possibilities are not one. The possibilities are a plenty, infinite. That's how the coin infinite possibilities came in. What we do is we provide end-to-end -end HR solutions to organizations. We're just not a consultant who look at your time and tell you, in your watch and tell you what the time is. Well, we run the HR department of companies like a regular HR department being run in organizations. We provide the entire backend support. Our employees do not come to our office. They go to the organization, go back home. That's the way they work. So we understand the existing problems, issues, concerns of organizations. Uh, we also are into staffing, which means uh, the employees on our roles work for different companies. And we take care of their entire statutory requirements, salaries, etc. Of course, the companies pay us, and then we pay them. Uh, so we do that as uh, as a staffing uh, a solution. 
as he said, HR outsourcing is we manage the HR department of companies, both large organization as well as the smaller and the medium sized organizations. We also do a lot of training. When I talk about training, I meant soft skills training. And uh, we do the high end consulting, like my friend said, the balance co card, the KRA exercises, the KPI exercises building culture in the organization. These are all the consulting work that we do, apart from the organizations that we run the HR department where we implement that. And of course, uh, we found that uh, there's a lot of money in background verification, so we got into that. Because we are existent in a lot of locations across India, so we said this, is a, this, is a, this makes a good business sense. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, the topic that was given to me was managing uncertainty. You know what's the best thing about uncertainty? Any guess? It's uncertain itself. Which means that the moment that is present, let's say our country is going through a period, the whole world is going through a period of uncertainty. It's temporary. It's not going to be permanent. So whatever we do or the way we react is very, very important. If you react a knee-jerk reaction, if you do too many things, then you're heading for trouble. When the uncertain times become certain, that's the time people in the organization will look at you and say, hey, how did you treat me when things were uncertain? That's the time. In certainty, I'll be with you. Why is it that some of the people in the organization are still with you? They don't leave the company. Despite their marketability being high, it's because they find value in that organization. The organization has taken care of them during uncertain times. Okay, Right, I think the next presentation after this, I guess uh, at a later date, would be managing certainty. Okay, This is an HR perspective. Okay. Uh, the contents of the presentation that I would do would be uh, what would be the impact on HR due to business challenges. There are certain business challenges. Business goes through certain uncertain times. So what is the direct impact of HR on that? How does it directly affect HR? So what are the challenges that the HR faces during this time? And what is it that we need to do being proactive as an HR uh, function in the organization, how do we deal with the situation? How do we be more proactive? And of course, the, as I said, the uncertain time is not going to last for long, it's going to be certain. So you need to also plan ahead, keeping in mind what is it that you need to do now so that at the time of certainty, when things start looking up, when you start growing, when you're successful, uh, you start doing the right things. Okay. Okay, what is the impact of HR? I guess there are many, many challenges which an organization faces during uncertainty. I have carried a few of them and seen how does it directly impact the human resources function. Uh, unfortunately, most of the things that need to go up come down and most of the things that needs to be down go up. What goes down is your revenue. There's a pressure on revenue, the revenue starts going down during uncertain times. What happens then? What else goes down? It's the bottom line. Your bottom line gets affected. Your profits go down. What else? What goes up? Well, the certain thing that goes up is your pressure on receivables. We found this in many organizations. There are companies, you have 30 days, 45 days. Well, the company says, well, 30 days is not enough, 45 days. 45 days also, you know, you have companies who are not able to pay you. So there's huge, huge pressure on receivables. And the ones who have not been paying you all these, uh, you know, years, or who have been delaying their payments, in any case, they have a reason to say, look, I don't have money right now, I can't pay you. So there's a huge pressure on the receivables. And what goes down is your net sales realization. You find prices dropping, you need to move your products. So your net sales realization starts coming down. That's how the profitability also gets affected. And your revenue also gets a hit. And what remains constant 
is the delay in expansion plans. If there's an expansion plan, you would say, look, we don't have the money to, to, to go in for the expansion plan. Or if there's something new coming up, let's not do it. Let's hold on. Or if there is an expansion plan going on, there's a hold on it, even if it means halfway through. So uh, how does these affect the human resources or the HR? What happens? What goes up again? Suddenly you find when your revenue goes down, the manpower cost as a percentage of sales or revenue goes up, which is about 4%, 6% suddenly becomes 10%, 11%. So you find it, you know, the organization says, boss, that's, that I can't reduce. It's only going to increase. If the uncertain times are going to be, let's say, longer, it's only going to increase. So as a percentage, there's a huge pressure on the HR department to keep it down. Everybody doesn't want the, all the, the owners do not want that the manpower cost should keep going up. They say, bring it down. Now you reduce it. Times are tough, reduce it. So what happens? Some of them say, look, the one way of reducing it to ask people to leave. Anyway, the high cost people. In some of the companies that we were working with, you know, uh, during certain times, they used to call them by the name. Sridhar, kahao? Sridhar ko bula ke le kyao? Arvind ko bula ke le kyao? And during uncertain times, wo dasa lakh wala admi hai na, usko bula ke le kyao? Wo aat lakh wala admi hai na, usko bula ke le kyao? Suddenly, the, the name turns into money. So suddenly they realize, look, that's there in their mind, saying, look, if 10 lakh they're on this go, or aaj kal koi jada kaam nahi hai, kyunki apna sales nahi hai, to kya karne ka iske saad? So that's another issue that comes up. So what goes down is your recruitment. There's a recruiting guy who's doing a lot of recruitment, suddenly you find that there's no job for him. There's a freeze. And one of the key, what happens with some of the companies, the key positions are on hold. Just hold on. So there's a freeze on recruitment. Or the positions is drastically reduced. And suddenly you find a lot of people in the market available and calling up and saying that boss, job hai to, you know, um, mere ko dilao. Incidentally, we find more people who are working in the company asking for a change in job than the people who are actually outside the company who are looking for a job. Okay. Anyway. Uh, what remains constant is your increments in promotion, right? So people say, look, boss, increment nahi sakte. As it is, you know, the, the manpower cost as a percentage of revenue has gone up. You give them further increment in promotion, it's going to go up. So no increment, no promotion. You have a tough time at home, okay? You have to convince your family, your wife especially, or the wife has to convince the husband why you didn't get a raise. And it will be worse if both of them are working and one has got a raise and the other doesn't have. Okay. So what comes down? Employee development. Training winning nahi karne ka bhi. Ban kar do. So the training person who is doing training has no job. Employee development. Achha, these four people, you are sending them for some course in some uh, institute or something like that, yeah, abhi ban, abhi baad mein dekhte. we'll see next year. So the employee development comes to a hold. So the budgets are squeezed. And there's something else also which comes down, which my sales people, you know, sales team will feel absolutely hurt, is the incentives, which is dependent, and the variable pay also. If you have a, you know, a salary which has fixed and variable, your variable is, Badly hit. Says that look, boss, company is not, not doing well. Twenty percent of your total CTC was your variable. Now we'll not be able to pay you. So actually, what you had planned that your CTC was about, let's say, twenty lakhs, is now about sixteen lakhs. So all your entire. So you also have certain time, uncertain times at home, because you have to replan your whole budget. So that's how it has an effect. These are the direct impact on HR. Now. What are the challenges that the HR guy faces during uncertain times? Suddenly you'll find excess manpower. You know, the revenues have come down. There are a lot of people in the company. They say, bahut jata log ho gaya. what to do? Anyway, your uh, salaries are not going to reduce. Nothing is going to reduce. You find excess manpower. So he has to deal with excess manpower. That's one of the challenges. The other part is engaging employees. Because your workload drastically reduces, 
So you need to keep employees engaged. So how does he keep his employees engaged? That becomes a big challenge for him. There's a lot of insecurity. People don't know whether they're going to lose their jobs. People don't know whether they're going to be shifted out of Delhi into some remote corner in Punjab or some remote corner in Maharashtra or in South. They don't want to go there. So they, there's a lot of a sense of insecurity. So people go to him and deal with him, ask him what to do. So he has to deal with the insecurity. Employee motivation goes down. So the motivation of employees is down, so he has to find a way of motivating them. My friend over here, Madura Codes, where they do a lot of motivation, well, some of those budgets may get squeezed during uncertain times. And some of the budgets, whereas a lot of companies, I'm sure like companies like Birla's, they say employee motivation is critical. Come what may, we will keep it up. We'll keep it flying, the flag, you know, flying high. He has to deal with emotions. This is very critical. A lot of emotions flying around. So he has to deal with all those emotions. And there's a huge pressure on the policies. The most, you know, among the policies, you find your travel policy and your communication policy to be the most, you know, that's where you spend the maximum. So suddenly you find that, you know, there's huge pressure on him to see and look at the policies, right? And then ultimately there's also restructuring that happens. So he has to restructure the organization to manage all the uncertainties that you just went through. So what is it that the HR can do? Be more proactive. You know, he has to do three important things during uncertain times. Any wild guess? Three important things. It's communication, communication, communication. It's the most important things. And most of the organization fail in communication. And communication has to happen or it has to come from the people who matter. The HR guy there in the company is never given any importance. Suddenly during uncertain times, the boss tells him, now you go and tell everybody not to worry. Nothing will happen. We will take care of everybody. You think people are going to listen to him? He say, hey, chal chal bacha, yesterday you were listening to me, now suddenly you are coming and telling me what happened. So there is no importance given. So it has to be delivered or told by people who matter. And the people who are matter are your senior management. They are the ones who have to be involved. HR can facilitate the process. If the HR if the person in the organization is an HR guy and his words matter, then he is the guy to also say. But it has to be a team of people in the organization who are brought together and say, let's communicate to people and say, times are not as bad as what's going to, it's not going to remain like this, it's going to go away. Or what is it that you're going to do? Because there are a lot of insecurities within me, so you need to clear that through communication process. And let me tell you, in any uncertain times, the people who would leave you are the people who are performing in the organization. Because they are employable. They are able to get a job faster than you and there are competitors waiting to hire them. Despite they being in the same situation, they'll still go and hire them. Well, they may look at somebody within their organization and make him redundant, but still they'll go and hire this person. And the mediocre people are the ones who still continue in the organization. So communication becomes very important. That's the most important thing. The second thing that he needs to do is create a grievance cell in the organization. This is basically to address concerns. It need not be he himself. It can be a team of people who basically manage grievances. It need not be during uncertain times. It can be always. But more so during uncertain times because a lot of people have a lot of issues and concerns where they can either write through a form of email or go and talk to the person or speak to the person on the phone. There are multiple ways of communicating, but that channel must be open. What else? He has to rework on the KRAs. The KPIs will still remain the same, I guess, I presume so. He has to make the KRAs. KRAs is key result area, it's not the Punjabi key result area. Eh? So it is the real English key result area where you have to rework based on the market, you know, conditions, situation, and make it more challenging. The idea is not to bring it down drastically, but to create a window of challenge where the person says, yes, I can still go and achieve it. And he has to develop an incentive plan for breakthrough ideas. 
some of the companies come out with this. See, typically what happens during good times, the people in the front, they are the guys who are in touch with the customers, they are in touch with the, uh, the, the, uh, the competitors, they know the market, they know in and out of everything. The poor guy has been giving you ideas on ideas, nobody is bothered to listen to him during certain times. So here is an opportunity for him to come out and say what he believes, you know, is right. He can come out with a breakthrough idea. So it's an opportunity to create an incentive plan where any breakthrough idea which will carry the business to the next level, you need to accordingly reward that person. So that's another way of looking at, uh, you know, moving forward. It's, imp it's not, as he said, the increment in promotion gets affected, but it's important to look at your key performers or your key contributors in the organization. They still need to be taken care of. You, by giving them an increment, you may not give it, you may not give them 15, 20 percent, you may give them still less, but you still need to give them and promote them to give a message to the people that these are the people who actually matter in the organization. Your 20 percent of your people in any, the Pareto's principle, 20 percent of the people give you 80 percent of the output. So you need to manage those 20 percent. Because how you, how you treat them today, during times of certainty, they would react. So it's important to keep them. Then what you would do, if they leave you, you'll start running around, the recruitment guy becomes active, he goes run around, looks for a person, that person would take six to eight months to understand the organization, by the time he starts delivering, it's one and a half times, one and a half years or two years, again you're back to uncertain times. Could be. Because they say the cycl cyclic period of certainty and uncertainty going forward could be shorter. Okay? This is a perception and a thought. What else? He has to restructure and redeploy people. So, restructure the people who are not, the load, suddenly the load changes, so he has to see, uh, you know, how he can um, re or rework on the load of the organization in the sense, uh, workload of different people and say, and restructure it. And there are positions, one of the ways of looking at is, in terms of recruiting, you have stopped some of the positions. So, that position, there was a job description, can we look at breaking it up into two, three positions within the organization and see whether we can bifurcate the job and the existing person within the organization can do it. So probably you may not need to hire. In adversity, it's also an opportunity. So probably you would come out with certain people who can take on additional load and start doing very well. And he has to review policies and rework to reduce cost. Well, you don't, if it's a morning, evening kind of a thing, when you need to go by flight and come back by the evening, you can say, okay, fine, if the distance is not, if it's an overnight journey, take the train, come back by train. That way you reduce cost. Communication cost, you don't need to always talk on the phone. You, you can respond through emails. There are different ways of looking at it. So look at how you can reduce cost. And it's a huge amount of cost, let me tell you. It's a huge amount of cost. Even the administration cost is something which you can rework on. And he has to engage key employees meaningfully. Give them enough work, give them challenging markets. There may be certain people in the system who have not been given challenging markets. Here is an opportunity for you to give him opportunity in challenging markets where the individual starts doing well. And invest in employee development. Well, uh, it's not good to cut off because what happens is if you reduce or totally cut off employee development budgets, then you're not actually preparing your key people in the organization to face the challenges which is going to happen, which is going to come in tomorrow. So it's important to invest. Okay, this is the last slide. So planning ahead, what needs to be done? Here is an opportunity to develop a more positive and performance work culture. Like my friends here also have said, it's an opportunity to change the mindset of people, bring in more, uh, uh, you know, a positive work culture, a more performing oriented work culture, bring in a lot of teamwork within the organization, encourage uh, uh, people to support each other. So there are enough ways of doing it. He can, is an opportunity for you to weed out non-performers who have been in the system for a long time. So you can plan it and say how we can weed out these people. And develop a succession plan. That is, 
develop a second line. Well, this is one area where we found in many of the organizations, people don't like to develop the second line, many of the companies, because the second line becomes a threat to the first line. Okay. So uh, how to deal with that becomes very important for the HR department or the HR person or the function and say what we can do to develop the second line and ensure that the first line is not threatened how the growth happens. So there's a career plan that is very, very critical for the uh, for the, each individual to be planned within the organization. Uh, of course, having challenging targets, create more challenging targets. He has to create more challenging targets and build a recognition program, reward recognition. He has to build a recognition program in the system. Then identify and develop leaders at various levels. You don't need to have a leadership development program right at the top level. There are leaders within various sections and subsections. So you develop those leaders to manage better so that tomorrow they grow to be leaders. So you don't need to hire people from outside to manage your functions or manage departments. You need to look for people from within. So here's an opportunity for you. There are many companies we're dealing with who've, who only hire management trainees or graduate trainees. And they say, internally, we'll develop people. Otherwise, why will people remain with you? Because there's no career in the organization. And there's an opportunity to bring in competitive edge by giving those development inputs, uh, by, by bringing in key areas of inputs. You create a competitive edge because the competitors are all, it's important for him to understand what the competitors are doing so that when things become certain, you have the competitive edge. So what are you going to do today to create that competitive edge? Because tomorrow, see what happens during uncertain times is when there is no growth in the market, each one is trying to eat each, other into, eat each other's market share. So that's where you'll have to be a little careful and manage. So you need to prepare your people for that also. That's it. Thank you very much.